So this example is from one of last year's students and her literature review um, was looking at the topic of flooding in relation to questions of climate change and sustainability. And you can see she's given it quite a, um, a kind of uh, urgent title, will we float or drown? Um, and what uh, what I suppose she's trying to do there is is draw um, draw out the the urgency of this question and, and and the way that climate change is framed. But if we um, if we kind of scroll down and look at her index and, and contents page, um, the literature review is covering quite a lot of ground. So she starts off by talking about a sort of history of flooding um, and where she says the myth, the reality, and causes. Um, what she's drawing attention to is, I suppose, the whole language around flooding as being very linked to climate change in, in the media right now, but then trying to kind of use academic literature from a variety of different disciplines to uh, to kind of question that and look at how historically flooding has shaped um, the urban and the rural environment. Um, and then with this question of realising and embracing this change rather than fighting it, she draws attention to the different ways that uh, flooding can be addressed um, in in different kind of contexts and uh, and different approaches to, to to planning and design. So this is the um, the second page of the the students' uh, literature review, looking at kind of different historical understandings of flooding. And I think it's really interesting here that she she sort of unpicking. Um, the, the sort of historical causes of flooding and recognising that they occur in different ways, that there is there are kind of natural causes, but also man-made ones. Um, and then as she goes on to show that also humans have kind of strategically uh, used flooding um, in order to, to kind of um, achieve their own ends. Um, yeah, I just wanted to ask you about this section where it seems that these ideas are are quite far outside of architecture at the moment, but but that is something that you you could expect to to do. Yeah, uh, well, I think that's that's really good to to point out. So obviously, um, you're being asked to address and respond to different climatic conditions, and um, and this student, for example, was addressing flood, and and to start off with, it can go quite broad. So you might read into kind of geography, urban geography, um, sort of different histories um, as well as kind of ecological literature um, and use that to kind of inform the, the sort of new position that you end up uh, taking on design. So I think at this stage in the literature review we'd really encourage you to, to read quite widely across different di disciplines and look at how in the literature review you can kind of make connections between those texts. Mm -hmm. One of the things I think this student did very well was that she was able to take some of the texts that we uh, looked at together in class in the seminars and kind of really weave them together with her with her own readings and her own research. So, for example, here in the kind of second uh, paragraph, um, in the seminars, we read a text called The Natural Contract by the French philosopher Michel Serres. And so she's really sort of taking parts of his argument, which was really about our relationship to or humanity's relationship to nature, if you like. And so she's taking some of that and then starting to kind of connect that. So where he's starting to talk about the ways in which our relationship to nature is we're looking always for sort of short term solutions. She then connects that with to work by Naomi Klein, such as the um, the ones that we've also kind of covered in class and where she um, sort of connects that then to sort of economic growth and kind of um, and other kind of sort of approaches. So she's really building the connections between two kind of points of literature and then um, connecting it to her own research. So a little bit further down um, the page, um, we kind of start to see um, in the paragraph that starts, however, even if we consider that we start following a natural contract with the climate, there is a high possibility that this would be drafted in a way that would favour the elite rather than the entire world. So this is not something that Michel Serres says in his text, but through reading the Naomi Klein argument around climate justice, she's able to reach this kind of conclusion from herself. And I think that shows a very sophisticated understanding of the issues um, as well. So would this, would this relate back to the um, conceptual skills uh, assessment criteria? Yeah, absolutely. So this is this is exactly what this is talking about. So she's really engaging with that theory of the natural contract and with climate justice and with those kind of discourses. But then she's then interrogating them sort of in her own terms and making those connections for her 
for herself. So yeah, Michelle Serres does not talk about really about climate justice in the way that that Naomi Klein does, for instance. So she's really kind of constructing constructing this in her work. I think um, something that's interesting to pick up on when you're thinking about um, writing uh, that's that's bringing together people, f uh, kind of the voices, I suppose, of authors from different disciplines um, and from practice and, and theory is how you introduce those voices in your literature review. So we can see that the student does introduce, um, she sort of says, as Naomi Klein writes, as Michelle Serres writes, um, but she doesn't actually position who those people are and, and kind of why they're writing. So whereas Kim just then, when she was talking about Michelle Serres, introduced him as a philosopher, um, I think it's it's quite helpful when you're constructing these ar arguments to think where they're coming from. So what does somebody writing from a perspective of developing a philosophy um, of human relationships with nature, um, how does that relate to somebody who's more of a kind of activist like Naomi Klein? So somebody who's kind of interested in these questions of environmental justice and, and, and kind of directly affecting people's um, perceptions and actions in terms of climate change. So we've uh, we flicked now to the bibliography um, of that same uh, student's literature review, because I think it's quite helpful to see this in terms of that uh, second assessment criteria of research skills. So um, you can see uh, as you look down the literature that, that the student is looking at kind of more general texts that talk about climate change and the built environment, that there's some kind of policy text. So she's got the American Society of Civil Engineers text, um, but then she's also referring to texts from the seminars uh, series that we've that we've kind of read together that are very specific to uh, to what we're looking at on the course. So the Jennifer Gabris text about cosmopolitics of energy um, and the Naomi Klein text that we were just talking about. So I suppose what I wanted to point out here is how the student has made use of the, the reading um, and I suppose kind of developed an understanding of the concepts in the texts that were set for the unit, but then also gone out and found her own um, sources to, to kind of build a bigger picture. Yeah, and I think it's also worth saying, so for instance, with the Jennifer Gabriel's text, this is called A Cosmopolitics of Energy. So while this student was in her climate was flooding, um, what the student's been able to do is, whilst that text is about energy and energy practices, what she's been able to do is take the wider principles from those texts and, and make it relevant to her own kind of interests. And I think that's also, um, yeah, that's also kind of quite skilled in, in the way that she's done that. You can also sort of see from the list, if we scroll down a little bit more, that she has, you know, she has done some quite extensive research and she's referencing um, very specific um, pieces of, of literature about her, her topic, so natural disasters and flooding. So these are kind of whole books as well as sort of um, book chapters, articles as well. So she's referencing a real range of material from a range of authors, um, as well as, as Anna said, the, one, the ones that we've um, set out in the brief. Yeah. Is it, is it worth, Ian, maybe saying something about the way that she's referenced the, the book chapters? Yeah. Yeah, this, this reference here from McGrath, that's McGrath is actually the editor of that book, and in in the text, the student has referenced um, McGrath, but it's actually one of the chapters from this book. I've got the I've got the um, the contents page of the book here. So the chapter they're actually referencing, I think, is this design sustainability in the global city, which was actually written by Christian Hubert. So the te in the text, it should say those people rather than McGraw. And it could be quite confusing uh, to, your, to your tutor who may uh, recognise some of these names and will immediately pick up that the, the wrong person has been cited. Yeah, so that's something that, that um, Ian will be covering with you in the, in the seminars about referencing is, is how to kind of spot those, um, those sources that need to be referenced with a little bit more care or, or a bit different to the norm. Yeah, so this is really then coming on to the kind of next assessment criteria, which is about technical skills, about whether you're referencing properly. So that applies to the references you're making within your own text, as well as how you're, um, how you're listing those references, how you're listing your kind of evidence, if you like, in your bibliography. So you need to be following uh, the format that's set out in the UCA um, Harvard Guide. OK, so this is a piece of work by another student who um, was doing this unit last year. Um, and 
I think this student did, did very well in, in kind of communicating and putting together her literature review. And in her work, she was interested in the topic um, of, of drought uh, and particularly in designing in kind of drought conditions that are obviously going to be exacerbated by climate change. Um, so I think she does a really good job of uh, firstly introducing her literature review as a whole. So she's setting out the very big ideas and very big consequences, if you like, of climate change, and then very slowly sort of introducing us to what she's going to do um, in her literature review. So already as a reader, you're, you're very aware of what's coming up and how she's sort of organising the work. So you can see, if you sort of scroll down a little bit, you can start to see um, how she's setting that out. And, you know, she's using um, different kind of headings to very clearly articulate the different areas of work. So she starts off with the, with the very broad, again, from a very broad perspective of the bigger things around climate. Before then, she sort of, later in the review, then she sort of looks very specifically at what the challenges are brought by drought, her, her topic of interest, and then the design responses to drought. So she's got a very kind of clear um, structure there. You can see by looking at this part as well, again, that kind of criteria of technical skills, she's really referencing very clearly um, you know, where she's getting um, her information from. So you can see a direct quote there um, in the, that first line that she's taking um, from, from two kind of known authors on the subject. But then she's also um, kind of using a variety of different um, kinds of referencing. So further down where she refers to Dar and Kifan, um, that's very much in her own words. But again, she's still telling us where that information um, came from. So she's referencing really clearly here. Mm, and, and I suppose that um that the kind of introduction setting out what she wants to do and then that kind of linking together and and sort of synthesizing different relevant arguments would all be um things that would you that you would kind of be able to award marks for in assessment criteria four of communication is that right yes absolutely so it's really um so it's not just that she's doing the task of reviewing the literature but she's also telling us and communicating really clearly what the what what that is and taking us through it as well so it's very explicit in this in this case so i think another thing that this student does really well in in terms of the way that she's communicating in her um in her literature review is that after reviewing this material so she looks at things from policy from un to design uh different kinds of design um ideas and projects as well as the literature around kind of uh, a drought um, she she has a very clear section in the, her conclusion at the end where she where she starts to then draw together all the things that she's looked at and starts to make some conclusions about what she thinks about all of that. So she sort of set out all these different points of view and then saying, well, actually, what do I conclude from all this? What does all this mean to me? And so she sort of then starts to articulate, well, you know, what what are the consequences? And then as if we kind of scroll down a little bit from there, we can see that she then moves on from that sort of saying what she's learned from that literature to then setting out um, a very clear and distinct um, position statement. So some students prefer to sort of integrate their position statement into their literature review. In this case, she's chosen to do it separately. And I think it's been quite successful in the sense that she then says, OK, well, following then what I've learned, what is it that I want to do in my studio work and my research this year? How am I going to take this further? And she then sets out a plan of then what she's going to do. And I found that, very, again, very clear. So this is again dealing with that, that kind of assessment criteria of how you're communicating but it's also the very fine i would say the very final assessment criteria which is about self-management so that's really about yeah her position statement what's her relationship to the literature she's read and it's also showing us that she's taking responsibility for her own research in the future so it's really about her becoming kind of self-managed a kind of self-driven kind of learner rather than just waiting to be to be told what she should do next yeah, and I think it's, I mean, it's worth pointing out, isn't it? It's not that you need to know at the end of your literature review exactly what your final design project is going to be, because I know um, certainly lots of the students um, that we saw were still in the very kind of early stages of thinking about what they wanted to do next, or even in, in terms of kind of those questions um, about, uh, about kind of climate uh, and sustainability being so big that it was hard to imagine what the design response might be. So it's not necessarily that you need to sort of know and set out what it is you're going to do next. I think what 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 um, what you're drawing attention to here is is more that um, that she's kind of drawing some kind of conclusions um, about what it might mean for the way that you approach design rather than what your design 
uh, project is. Yeah, and that might involve also kind of just saying what you're interested to find out more about. So it might be a question that you're posing rather than that comes from what you've learned so far. So yes, it doesn't have to be definitive in any way, but it's just sort of setting setting an idea of where you might go, what you want to find out about. And if you framed it as a series of questions um, that you wanted to investigate, say, would that be would that be okay? Yeah, I think so. I think it really would. I think particularly if those questions come from or directly follow the material that you've been looking at. So if you're coming to a conclusion, let's say that you conclude from looking at sort of climate justice or something that design should be intervening about that, then your question might be, well, I'm really interested to find out more. What are the ways that designers have intervened in that? And what can we learn from that? I think that would be a really relevant way to, to conclude. Great.